Can you tell me a little bit about yourself, Martha, and what's happened over the last couple of months? I have my daughter as my power of attorney. My daughter. And she abused that power by taking money from me and gambling it away and using it to buy meth to support her habit. Yeah. And if any of the questions I ask you are too personal, you don't have to answer. I'm just, you know, that's okay. And yeah, I know all that situation was going on and, and we were helping you go through the bank statements and we've seen the, the casino statements coming, the withdrawals coming out and, and how much that it totaled to is about $21,000 and which is quite a significant amount of money if you know, you're living off of, because you're widowed, right? So, yes. And it's been quite a while since Jimmy's passing and you rely on everything that you've saved and the retirement that he had. So without that and the money that you had that was taken puts you kind of in a hard spot financially. Yes. And I remember, uh, and again, if it's too personal, you don't have to, you know, we can just get past it. But I remember you weren't very happy a while ago, right? A couple, maybe even a, just a couple of weeks ago. And um, situations in life kind of seemed a little dark and probably you felt out of control. I'm not sure, but I remember me, me and you were talking, you, you said that you just weren't happy with life, to put it that way, and that you just rather not even be around. Yes, I mean, to think that my own daughter would do this to her mother was just heartbreaking. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it just, it, it just blew my mind to think that she would do this to me to, to the point that I may lose my home yeah. that I've lived in the majority of my life. It, it, it just blew my mind. Yeah, I definitely understand. Is that kind of what played a part in, because I know from Alex and everyone that you had mentioned not, you know, not wanting to be around, take possibly suicidal thoughts, that you had talked to even the chaplain about it. Did that kind of play a role in that? Just that feeling, that sense of just out of control. You, you had someone trying to take advantage of your life. They're abusing their power of attorney over you. And you had that feeling of helplessness. Was that kind of a part of everything that was going on in your mind at the time? De most definitely. I mean, it, it was like a feeling of hopelessness that, that you couldn't get out of. Yeah. That, you know, that, I mean, how can your own child do that to their mother? Mm -hmm. uh, it, it just, it, it just blew my mind. I, I just, it was, it was heartbreaking. I mean, just, just totally heartbreaking. Yeah. Well, since uh, you know that we work also heavily with Feed My Sheep today, it's the ministry that me and, me and Judy are part of, and and they've been really helpful in this whole process because you know we just didn't have the finances ourselves, you know. But having that, I'm just was so grateful myself because I was like, only I was like, Lord, only you could have orchestrated something this perfect because we literally had just partnered up with Feed My Sheep today. And then with the situations that was going on, I was like, it was just amazing to see how God orchestrated everything to help you out. And um, I just hope that after all this, that you really do start to see the hope coming back and that I know it was hard before I've been there myself. I've told you about my own story where I did try to take my own life and 
and where that all led. But I know it was the grace of God that kept me here on this earth because he obviously had more plans for me in my life than even when I couldn't see past my own problems. And um, I know that can be such a hard spot to be in, you know what I mean? But I, I hope that now you can see hope that there's that God loves you, that Jesus loves you, and that how much he's orchestrated everything to help you out mm. and how he's still gonna he'll never leave you nor forsake you and that that's the promise that the Lord shared with me through scripture and spoke into my spirit I actually woke up from a really bad dream one night and I remember I was very dismayed I was very just shooken up from it and during all the craziness of, the, of that experience and I felt so uneasy in my spirit I just will never forget I didn't hear audibly anything, but I felt in my spirit literally like words forming that I will never leave you nor forsake you. And I remember such a peace that came over me that I knew that no matter how hard things were getting or how hard things got, that God had it, everything under control and that he's orchestrating it all for your good and his glory because that's how God works, right? Because he's always trying to help us. A lot of people think that God's just sitting, some guy sitting on a throne in the clouds, just, you know, zapping people for not doing the right thing but that's so far from the truth you know he's always there to help us and he knows more than all of us as far as our depravity the skeletons that we have in our closets and yet he still chose to die for us so that we could have life through him and i think that's so amazing and i think that's also another amazing thing about feed my sheep today because uh i thought about this the other day honestly and um um, I'm sure you're familiar with Peter in the Bible, and he betrays the Lord in the sense that, you know, the Lord told him, he's like, oh, you know, I'll never, I'll never betray you, Lord, you know, and he's like, before the rooster crows, he's like, you'll deny me three times, and he did, and I remember he said he went out and he wept bitterly, and he felt like, you know, the Lord, you know, I could only imagine what was going through Peter's mind at that time, I just could only imagine, but when they get back together, and he pulls him off to the side right before he ascends. He starts talking to him. And he, he's like, Peter, do you love me? And he's like, yes, Lord. And he says, Peter, do you love me? And he says, yes, Lord. And then he asks a third time, Peter, do you love me? He says, yes, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. And he says, go feed my sheep. And I was thinking about that the other day, and I was like, man, that feels like me in my life and how many times that I've denied the Lord knowing the truth. And I was like, how weird is it that I ended up in a ministry that's called Feed My Sheep Today, you know? And um, so I think that, I don't think it's chance that all this happened the way it did. I've been thinking about it heavily too, and I was like, man, you just can't make stuff like this up. You know, only God can orchestrate things on such a perfected level because I know Laura or that individual had the power of attorney, had strong armed the situations to where there was nothing that could really no progress could be made yeah. but how it even worked out to where she was put into a place where she couldn't get in the way of progress you know and i was like and it's good for her because it's it's a place where she can rehabilitate potentially and i can say this much you and judy have been very helpful to me you really been my hope through all of this. Yeah. You've really done a lot for me. Hey, you know, Jesus tells us to love everyone. Yeah. You know, it don't matter who you are, what skin color you are, you know, that's what we're called to do is to love and to serve others and to, to share the love of God because there's no greater testimony than sharing love. And living. You can living say, it. you can say whatever you want, you know, anyone can say anything, but when you rubber meets the road, are we doers of the word or are we just hearers? You know, because James is like, don't be just hearers, but yeah. be doers of the word. Prove, walk out your faith, you know. Mm -hmm. Not that we're saved by faith or works, yeah. we're saved by grace through faith only, but the evidence of your salvation comes through your manifestation of the love of God. God and the works that you do. Yeah, your fruit. Yeah, it's the fruit, but you know them by their fruit. And peace, love, joy, happiness, meekness, temperance, goodness, you know, those are the fruits of the Spirit. Not all of them, but not in the same order, but you know what I mean. It's it's all there. And that's from Galatians chapter 5, but that's so important to remember. But uh, 
the hope that you have in us, I hope, is hope really because it I couldn't do anything without Jesus. So I hope my hope is that you realize that there is always hope in Jesus. And that no matter how bad things get, no matter He's always gonna send someone along. He's always he he thinks that he knows your situation. And that's uh, that's what I found so profound about all of it was that he knew your situation and how you were in such a pickle in so many different ways and how yet everything just perfectly fell into place to where it could all get taken care of. That's how I, those are the moments when you know it's God. And then people sometimes will say, well, why would God allow this to happen to begin with? Because sometimes it takes stuff like that for us to realize that God's real and that he cares about you. He allows us to go through things so he can show you that without a shadow of a doubt, there's no other way it could have happened unless it was him that was actually orchestrating everything. And I know it's him because, I mean, I'm just a man. <laughs> I'm just as, I'm far gone. If it wasn't by the grace of God, I wouldn't be here today. And with all the problems that I've had, all the problems I've caused, and all the addictions I've gone through, the drugs, the alcohol, and you name it. I've, I tell people, I'm like, you know, Paul's always like, I'm the worst of sinners. It's like, Paul, move over. <laughs> I'm, taking, I'm taking your, I'm taking your, your title now, you know, and. I'm just grateful to the Lord because it blesses me to be able to help in every way we can. And I know everyone at Feed My Sheep today, that's why they do it, because they love to help. They want to, some people can't do, you know, because either physical inability to do it, you know, or their their jobs. So that's what I always tell people, I'm like, the body of Christ is an amazing thing because we each serve a role, you know. The Lord talks about how there's head, the head is Him. And then we have the feet and the eyes and the hands, you know. Not everyone is everything. So it takes a whole body to work together to get things accomplished. And I think that's profound because the Lord's allowing us to, to orchestrate through His work through us so we can actually serve Him and be in the body at the same time. And I'm like, man, that's so awesome because, you know, imagine if we didn't get to be a part of it. And that's even with, like, Alex with Melanie to motivate him to do stuff and then it, you realize how good it is for you to get out and to interact and the Bible talks about iron sharpeneth iron you know and I think that's amazing I'm like wow Lord I'll, again I know I said this a lot but only you can do this but I really appreciate it and I'm gonna start a GoFundMe so we can try to recover some of the assets that you lost because the bank can't do anything because it was through a power of attorney, right? So they can't help recover anything and possible legal fees and expenses, you know, like criminal charges and things of that nature. But uh, definitely want to start that up. So I will definitely leave a link and a copy of, of those informations and resources so you can donate to Martha's GoFundMe. And um, also, you can donate directly to Centurions of Faith, the PayPal, and that money will also get to her. But I highly encourage, if possible, that if you feel led, that you can donate to Martha's GoFundMe. That would be very helpful for her at this stage. And um, she's just completely relying on the body of Christ, guys, because she, her family situation is just non-existent. So she has a better family the body of Christ, and that's that's what it's all about. But uh, did you want to share anything else, Melvin? I just appreciate any help I could get. I truly would. Okay. Well, I appreciate Thanks for allowing me to talk to you like this, because I know it's weird. <laughs> it must feel weird, because not every day people do stuff like this. So. And then, check it out.